call the meeting to order. Six. Um, first, hey Jess, can you hear us? No. You can, sir. Very good. Great. First, actually, I want to thank yes, uh, Judy okay. for running the meetings the past couple of meetings. You've done a really good job. Appreciate that. Um, first, is are, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Yes. Bob, if uh, under number seven, you need to insert a word after the word car and insert the word financing bids. Yeah. The vehicle's already been approved. This is a, uh, choosing the finance right. for it. And add, uh, discuss firefighter level one training in the town forest. All right, next, uh, approve the minutes. The minutes of October 3rd, 2022. Motion the approval. Second. I have a motion by Brian and a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion about these minutes? I wanted to ask Eric on um, page three, item, the fourth item, the last paragraph. We talked about this, but we didn't take any action, did we? And then we discussed it. We discussed it now. Uh, Doesn't look like there was any action taken in the minutes either. Well, it says Eric Dodge would prefer that. Uh, certainly, I'm not the the approving authority, but uh, I did say that I uh, didn't want to entertain going to the bank and to Borns to discuss using their parking lot for overnight parking because they have such a huge volume of employees that come in in the first thing in the morning. I just I didn't think it was a uh, good business to talk to our neighbors about such a thing. So. But no, no action was taken on that. Right. I'm looking to see where it was on the parking thing. That's my recollection, too. We didn't, we didn't take any action. Okay. I just want to make sure. It was fourth on our list. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Is there any other discussion on these minutes? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Yes? Okay. Any opposed? Minutes are approved. Four. I'm abstaining because I wasn't present. Next, liquor control. Do we have liquor control tonight? All right, Sarah. How are you, Sarah? Fine. Good. We'll move on to new business. New business approved sole source vendor for the fire department radios. The fire department is running tonight to request the purchase of portable radios. Their radios are uh, were purchased originally. I don't know I didn't speak to more of the detail on it, but uh, they were purchased many years ago. They're out living their service life at this point. They don't owe us anything. But uh, if you'd like to purchase in item number two, you'll see a request to purchase radios. There's only one vendor servicing the radios or even offering this for sale in this area, and that's uh, Radio North. So we're <coughs> requesting that we go. Uh, sole source vendor for the department radios. Yeah, we usually try to get three bids or even two if we can, but in this case, it sounds like it's not really applicable. Did I get that right, Dunny? What's that? I get that right. Scott said yes. Okay. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion with this? And this is just approving the sole source vendor. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Jess? Aye. I like the thumbs up. That's as good as aye to me. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number two, now approve the purchase of the radios for the fire department. For this, I'll turn to Mr. Droney and let him explain. He's the one in charge of communications for the fire department. Yeah. Oh, I do? Yeah, come right up here, Scott. It's my first time, so I'm a newbie. Tell us your name. I'm Scott Droney. I'm the communications chair for Morsel Fire. And I brought a few of these handouts for the pricing and how it breaks down. I don't know if I brought enough. Um, 
Our current radios are vintage 2005 or so. We're pretty much way out of anything we're doing currently, or the standards that they're trying to update to. Um, these are basically the same radios that Stowe went with either last year or the year before. Um, it is a top of the line, high end item. Um, we hope to get many years out of them. Thank you. And they have uh, uh, Bluetooth capabilities and stuff like that, Wi Fi, so we can adapt to what we do have and the stuff that's coming up in the next couple of years that they're trying to push through. Seems like a fair amount of money, but it's actually gone down. Uh, the quote we got two years ago was seventy-eight thousand dollars, I believe. So, uh, eight eight radios. Yeah. You have a lot of money. Do you look at some other models too? Do you look at some other kinds? These are the similar to what we have for usability, uh, functionality. So we don't want to have to change any of that. Um, it's a vendor we've worked with for a long, long time. And it's, uh, they have the distributorship for our area. So there's not really a competitive base to them. These are the same as uh, rescue and fire out there, uh, rescue and police. These are UHF. Uh, PD has gone to VHF, UHF radio. Okay. It starts at $8,000 and we don't have, yeah. we don't have the need for it really. Um, yeah. Denny would probably be the one that would need that radio, but even then if he's in the truck, yeah. he has access to a PD radio. You have a comment, Danny? Yeah, fire is getting another price. We did price the model down. Mm -hmm. And it was, I'd say rough thinking a thousand dollars cheaper. But the one we're looking at has the, the noise canceling mic plus an extra watt. So going from a five to a six watt radio, which as you know, yeah. that's a big difference. It's a big difference. One watt. It's mm -hmm. yeah. I was gonna say now this radio gets you in and out of where you need to, even in the strangest places. I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, Stowe didn't have luck getting out of the base lodge, the mountain, until they got this radio, and now it's actually so so they like it a lot. Yep. Yeah. It makes good. a huge difference. Yeah. Any questions for Scott? I'll make a motion to approve the purchase of eight radios from Radio North for $38,800 for the fire department. Okay, I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this motion? So this page has 47879. The total is 4784. The spare radios, or spare batteries and chargers, um, that is the total cost, is the 47000 Yeah. I didn't hear what the motion was for, actually. I can amend it to 47, 8, 7, 9. 60. 60. Okay. I assume no, this is budgeted. Okay. Is this in the budget? This is not a direct budget item. Denny, go ahead. Okay. What we're looking for right now is the okay to get them. I have a line item of 12000 and if we can get your okay, these are a year, year and a half out. Then I can work with Tina and sit down with our current budget and see where we may be able to fall in. It will not be under that particular line. Right. So basically, if we can get the okay to get them and Put in there in your motion if you want. I get with Tina to make sure we can get the money from other line items, which I believe we can. Then we can get them all. Just kind of squeeze the budget orange a little bit. Does that sound good, Tina? Whatever Denny says. <laughs> it's up to him if his budget doesn't work out well. He's the one that's going to talk to me, not me. <laughs> you think he's the best radio, Scott? I do. Yep. Yeah, I've. And looking, like Denny said, there was two models down that we started with, and uh, the base model, it's a radio. The, the one in between, um, it's similar to what we have. It doesn't have the noise canceling or the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or the lot. Um, and for the money differences and what we can do, if we can get 15 years out of these radios, that'd be fantastic. Yeah. Um, but when I told them what we had for current radios, they were surprised that we were still right. as pleased as we are with them. 
And so, yeah, I know it's, it's a really sticker shock because the price is just crazy. But if you've been around radios or yeah. the technology or now that uh, the environment they have to go in, you know, the, yeah. the temperature ratings for them is 1700 degrees now. So yeah. is there any grants available for anything like this? You know, for the, fire department? the last two times we tried for grants, um, we're, we're not on their spectrum right now. They're trying to deal with either great big cities or, you know, right. like Craftsbury, the little, little towns. So we fell right in the middle. Yep. We had, we tried twice, got neither one. Okay. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Thumbs up. Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, number three, accepting conservation easement deed. I'm going to have Todd come up and speak to this one. This has to do with the John Chen property, South Bar 100, uh, around the corner from Joe's Pond Road. But it's uh, it's part of the subdivision process is uh, putting a large chunk of this land into a conservation easement and giving it to the town. The town has to agree to accept the easement. Okay. So the idea here is that there will be lots developed, but there will be land put aside. I'm gonna, I'll let Todd explain the whole project to you. Hey, Todd. I'm up here, Todd. <laughs> Conservation easement deed. For... Oh, sure. Uh, is John here? No, John's not here. Uh, there's a subdivision off of Route 100, headed towards Stowe, on the, uh, looks like the west side, right before you get to Van Ness Road, just short of Small Pond Road. Yeah. Uh, it's about 40 acres. The town's getting about half of it in the conservation subdivision easement. So I believe two townhouses were delivered there yesterday if anyone drove by and saw them. Two townhouses? Tiny houses. Tiny oh, houses. Tiny. Yes. Oh, it's going to be tiny houses? In no, there? it's going to be six single family homes, but the, the owner did a, the owner's waiting to build his primary home and did a tiny house for himself to live in now, his family, and a tiny, a tiny house for his office so he could work during the day with all the kids. Kids stay in one tiny house, he stays in the other. So that this um, easement deed goes with that proposal. Correct. This is this is the town's protection protection of that property in the easement deed. Okay. Uh, they can the town could locate a uh, baseball field, a soccer field there. The town could let the uh, property completely grow out. Um, half of the space has to remain undisturbed, but the other half can be used by the town for public purposes. Uh, it states in the easement: uh, hiking, walking, bicycling, running, whatever typical outdoor recreational activities. How big is this easement? Uh, what, 20, it says now, I think 21.65 or? Yeah. I don't have it in front of me. So is it, um, that's the amount of land available for the town to that's, that, that's what's the town getting, yes. Yeah. It's a nice chunk of land. This is the, uh, the hay field right between, there's a power line that runs across it at one point, but it's a hay field between Small Pond and Van Ness Road. You see it right on, right over under you drive by. It's a nice piece. It is a nice, it's, it's uh, Brent Miller used to own it for years. I was going to say, it was Brent and Sonny's, I think. Yep. <clears throat> Yeah. Can someone explain exactly where it is? Sorry. Yeah. And where can. the uh, and what the actual easement lot is on this um, document? Yeah. If you go down, uh, just past Joe's Pond Road, on the right hand side, on the right hand side, past that red farmhouse, there's a field there. Yep. Before you get to Vanessa Road, it's part of that field, right? It's okay. Like the back part. I think she's asking where. Where on this map is the easement? Is that what you're asking, Jess? It's the back side. I was asking both. Yeah, I was asking both. Yeah. Um, yeah, where and where is the easement? Like on this map, which is the back side. It's basically the whole middle and in the back. It's the um, the middle part of the easement. Yeah, it's right there. It's the whole whole middle part of the easement. It's this whole proposed lot one, 21.17 acres, parcel. 18, uh, yep. So it's basically that whole center area. With Correct, the center to the back. It's got lots on the north and the south. Did you hear that, Jess? Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is just the uh, formality. I mean, yeah. it's already 
uh, via the recording of this document, it already runs, there's already an Eastern running to the town. This is the formality of this is what we get with the conservation subject. We've done this before for 382 Bridge Street, for example, Nick Don's project behind Fred's Energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the more formality. We have to celebrate that we have 21 more acres of open space in town for outdoor recreation pursuits. And the, this is the development's already approved and gone through the process. Correct. Through the town, permanent, through Act 250, through everything. And um, so it's up to us. I was wondering, um, I was looking at that document talking about maintaining so the town would just be responsible for maintaining the town property. We're really, we really won't do much. The developer, via the DRB decision and conditions of approval, is responsible for trailhead signage, pretty much everything there. Um, we're just, in theory, we have the right to go in and repair something. Let's say something's damaged or uh, someone clear cuts the property. We don't use it. We can go in and try to repair it and put a lien. I believe we can put a lien against the property yeah. owner there. Well, if we saw something, it could be a liability. Of course, yes. In the future, with the zoning changes coming through, You'll own this as a separate part, as a separate lot, not an easement. Uh, so most developers have gone towards easements. The easements are a little harder to manage, in my, my opinion. We've got the lot up by Eric, where Eric lives. I need to say that up on uh, Washington Highway. Yeah. Uh, that was part of the Grease Farm. Uh, that's we own the lot. We have a deed to that property. With the zoning change and the uh, going through, we'll have deeds to these, not conservation easements anymore. So, would the conservation commission kind of take over that property? I don't want to speak for the Conservation Commission. They're wrong here. They haven't done, they've looked at them in the past, they haven't done much with them yet, but they're there if they want to help with them. Okay. I know they have a list of about six other, seven other properties in town we've created like this. I looked at it, and this is also a wildlife habitat, the wetland considered out. Okay. And is there, Good would we be um, uh, provide, putting up a parking spot there? Or? Place. There, uh, you can be able to. There's going to be a trailhead marking at the end of I think both cul-de-sacs, and you can walk into either cul-de-sac. I don't expect heavy use for like a parking lot. We haven't really had that in the other parcels we've done. Uh, the Johnson one, the most recent one, Nick actually has a couple of paved spaces at the end of each street, rail trail lane and lake, lake, lake ridge lane, for parking for the conservation easement. But I'm not expecting a ton of people here. Mostly the abutted property owners use these properties. They are, they're not draws from people outside the area. It sounds like there's nothing really negative about us except in no, it's a, it's, a, it's a great it's a great thing for the town. Ask a question. Go ahead. Is this fall under the new conservation subdivision rulings? In other words, there are 40, one or two acres, and 21 is being set aside as conservation, and the other. 21 acres can be subdivided into one acre lots. Am I understanding that right? Correct. Perfectly. He's been to a couple of planning meetings. Good job. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to very quickly. Excuse me. One second. One second, please. Oh, Were you sorry. asking a question? What, I just or wanted. I just wanted to Clarify. confirm oh. that that is what is going on here. Okay. Yeah. There's actually only the lots can be further subdivided, but right now. There's only six house lots in the 20 acres. So they're, those, they're very they're very generous lots. And those are those are sorry. So those are not one acre lots then. Those the, the six you're There's a couple about. smaller ones yeah. that uh, sure. but there are some large lots there. Okay. There's only six lots out of the 20 acres. Okay, okay. thank you. Sorry. Governor, I want to remind folks that when you when you speak, please come to the mic and, and say who you are. Okay. Identify yourself. Yep. Just a second, Ron. We'll go after Scott. Scott Thompson, lived here since 77, uh, resident. I live right on Brooklyn Street. Yep. Um, I'd just like to say that this, what I'm hearing um, from the board, I think this is more like a better approach than to, you know, because the location that you're talking about, you can get to stow by the shuttle, by working with the shuttle. You can get to Waterbury, Montpelier, and Burlington. And the residents of Morseville, I, now, I don't even have a child but i have my my god brother brian shackett's got two yeah. my friend carlton billy jr's got three so i know what it's like yeah and my friend rose Rolette, that i work for has got three yeah. and um i would just like to say i think a, an approach like that going a little bit out of town out of central town and school limits you know would make the uh community a lot more um at ease because at times the police department is down one person and putting that kind of extra 
people directly in the community, whether it's 911 for the police, the fire, there's just a little bit more tension on all the uh, 911 team too. But I think that's a good approach. Thanks. Thank you. Go ahead, Ron. I'm Ron Stanker, Chair of the Morristown Conservation Commission. I've reviewed this particular project, but I want to uh, let the audience know that this went through Act 250. And to answer your question about further subdivision, it would have to go back to Act 250 for an amendment. And I don't know if I would have been for that. Okay. That's wrong. All right, any other, any other comments? Is there a, do we have a motion? Oh, go ahead, sir. Yeah, Bob Bortree, uh, I live on Randolph Road. Why did this have to go through Act 250 and not other subdivisions? Anytime is a development. Uh, that, that, I mean, I don't want to turn this into a DRB meeting. It's a no, no, I, I, I'm just, I, I just. had a previous Act 250 permit on it. It was previously, uh, Brent had developed 68 homes here yeah. and permanent from back in the 70s that were never okay. built. Right. And so you're getting six houses instead of the 68 or whatever it was. So right. once Act 250 has a uh, threshold jurisdiction. majority jurisdiction, thank you over a property, they never give it they up. Never so give it up. Even yeah. though this wouldn't trigger Act 250 on its own, it's not 10 house lots, it's not uh, 10 acres, it goes through Act 250 because it's previous jurisdiction. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I'm just trying to get educated. Yeah. Yep. That's that's good information. And Act 250 is very uh, uh, much more, they heavily scrutinize things outside in the far excerpts of town. Uh, this was treated as a major project for Act 250 versus Riverside Village, the 135 units in Jersey Heights is a minor. So this is a bigger project Act 250 than the 135 units work out the street. Okay. Yeah. Act 50 is very permissive in Village. They're not, they're the opposite of permissive, they're public town. So they're looking for density. They want density. They don't want houses far from the towers. Go ahead, David. David Ring. I just wondered, I heard 20 acres and wetlands and ponds. Is there hunting that's going to be allowed here? Public hunting? Yeah. Okay. It's going to become town property. Right. Be, yeah. So there's no covenant restrictions against hunting then? Right. Well, still as a property owner. It's not a deed property. You have to talk to the property owner. We do. Okay. It is good hunting back there, though. Well, yeah, I know. I saw a couple moose firing in that backfield before <laughs> the school. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I move to accept and sign the conservation easement deed consisting of 21.17 acres of land accessed from first light lane or even tide lane from stone land. All right. I have a motion from Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this motion? Jess, what do you think? Aye. Thumbs up. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Jess? Thumbs up, right? Okay. Motion is passing. <coughs> Number four. Thanks, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Number four, approve new HRA reimbursement, health reimbursement account amount. Is that you, Tina? Yeah. Yes, sweet finance director. Um, we usually bring this to you every year when we get our new Blue Cross Blue Shield rates. Um, we have tried to increase the uh, HRA um, amount for people as the out-of-pocket maximum increases. So if we are to do that like we have normally, it will increase the funding um, for $200 for single plans and $400 for all other plans. Um, again, it's, um, it's not likely to cause any kind of adverse effects on the budget because this is saying that you will have to pay this extra if everybody maxes out, which no, that's impossible. Nobody's going to do that. But it's there for people that do need it, and some people will never use it. So it never has been an issue for the budget. I just thought I would come to you and ask you again if you wanted to do that. This helps us keep up with inflation and the cost of living. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield rates have gone up 12%. So, you know, I just wanted you to 
keep that in mind. So. Okay. Would the level be the same for a family plan? Um, a, what we usually do for the family plan, two-person plan, and adult and children plan, we take whatever the maximum out of pocket is, divide it by two, and um, and then add a thousand dollars for other family members. And the single rate is you take the maximum out of pocket for a single and divide it in half. So people still have the burden of paying some of the deductible, but not all of it. Okay. Do we hear a motion regarding that? I move we authorize renewal for 2023 HRA with levels of $10,100 for two person, adult plus children and family plans and $4,550 for single plans. All right, I have a motion by Don. Second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any <coughs> motion is passed unanimously. Number five, VTrans grant applications for the Moyle Valley Rail Trail. Trisha, is Trisha here? Hi, I did just join you via Zoom. Uh, um, hello, about all. Uh, VTrans is offering some grant funds for all the trails that have some completed work along the rail trail from, you know, St. <coughs> Johnsbury to Swanton. They didn't put out a monetary figure about what they have. Um, they are looking for proposals. I met with VTrans last week. We looked at our kiosk down at the um, bottom of Pleasant Street and it talked about some amenities that we could add, like um, some solar lights, possibly a, a charging station for your phone, um, a, a, a bike repair thing, possibly pulling out the concrete pad. Uh, make it so it's really a, a, a place that you want to stop. I, when we put the charging station down there, it was just so we had something down there, you know, and I don't know how many of you have ever been down to look at it. You know, it's a signboard. We put up information about the community and this, that, and the other. But what I'm looking for to do now is to do it as a place that people, once they got, if they took the time to stop at this, <coughs> They're going to be curious as to what else is in our community. Just so to make it a little more funky, a little more artsy. Um, I asked uh, VTrans what kind of money um, that, you know, it's it's federal money. It's all coming through ARPA funds. Um, it's a 80-20 grant. I would like authorization from the select board to apply. I don't have all the figures together because I just met with them, like I said, last Wednesday. <coughs> um, apply up to, I don't know, $50,000. And the other, if it's a 20... Um, we pay 10000 Right. I'll, I'll raise that in the community. Or I'll raise it through MAC or something. Like, it won't come out of taxpayer dollars. Okay. Thanks, <clears throat> Yeah. So what I need is something saying, do you have any other further questions about it? Or I need something saying you're authorizing me to apply. Okay. Um, Trisha, is it um, is it that little, that kiosk like down by 10 Railroad? It is. Oh, yes. cool. Yeah. Yeah. And feel like we need to like jazz that up a little bit. So, you know, if you got there, that you want to get off your bike and you want to see what else is in our community. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's our, our stopping point. Mm -hmm. Would you be listing things like uh, places to stay, where the bathrooms are located in the town besides <coughs> No, we would do bathrooms, parking, the general things that you have in your community, um, Judy, but you don't, I personally don't want to do any advertising in the sense of, um, you know, places to stay or this and that. I mean, I'd be more than, I think it'd be good to say, you know, there's a, some bike repair shops up here on Portland and Bridge Street, or there's this and that and the other. But I don't feel like we as a town should be an advertising board that says, you know, you can stay at this place or you could eat at this place. I don't know. It's, it's totally up to everyone's thoughts about it, but that's how I look at it. Okay, do we need a motion for this? Just a motion to approve <coughs> to apply for the grant. 
Judy, do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Any further discussion on this motion? Can I have it? Sorry. Go ahead. Excuse me. Can I have it say in there up to $40,000? Okay. I amend a motion to agree up to $40,000. And you second? Yes, I can. <coughs> you'll, have a, you'll have a second look at this because of the dollar amount. So if we are awarded a grant in that volume of money, right. we'll bring it back in front of you for signatures. So. Okay. okay. Good. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion has passed unanimously. Thanks, Tricia. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tricia. Number six, approved fireworks. 7423 for $12,500. As strange as it seems in October to talk about the 4th of July, this is when the letters go out. The scheduling is already beginning for next 4th celebration. Uh, the uh, fireworks company out of uh, the Montpelier area uh, reached out to us and has sent the letter that you have in your packet explaining the rising costs that they're, uh, they're seeing and feeling. And they are limited on the number of crews they have, so scheduling is tight uh, throughout the, the days prior to and following the 4th of July. <coughs> so they have increased the price for displays to a minimum of $12,500 if you're having your display on the 4th of July. Okay, so it would be an extra $2,500? $2,500 over last year's price, yes. Oh, last year, last year was 10000 I thought it was six. No, that was the year before, just 60, uh, Tina, help me, 6,600 the year before, it was 10,000 last year and 12,500 this year. Yeah. Nothing going down. Um, right. How, um, what, what day of the week is the 4th of July this coming year? I think it's a Tuesday. We can check real quick. How much cheaper would it be to have the fireworks on that Saturday <laughs> before? I mean, I, I don't want to be disrespectful to people who who've served and you know all of that but it's so much money it is, it, is, it, is, money it, it is a tuesday and it is less expensive to have it on an alternate day i will tell you that the few pieces of information that dan gave me before he departed one of them was if i don't want to get lynched don't day. don't change the Fourth of July fire. I hear that. I've heard that a hundred yeah. times. Because the one the one time in the thirteen years he was here that he yeah. had it on the third of July, yeah. he almost got ran out of town on a rail. I know. I got calls at home. I got people banging on me. I mean, door. is that is that the majority of people or is that the vocal few? Because we know the difference, right? That's all the ones I've heard from. I mean, is it like I don't I don't know that it's the majority of townspeople who. I mean, that's a lot. Of, it's a lot of money for something that lasts about 20 minutes, you know? I think just based on the price last year, we would maybe save $2,500 if we did on another day. That's what the data is. What it looks us. like, yeah, it kind of looks like that. When was the last time we had fireworks that wasn't on the 4th of July? I think like 10 years ago. Remember we did that? Yeah, you know. Is that, <laughs> is that weather related or was that? No, that we chose it because it was less expensive. No, it, I think it was because of how it fell on a Monday or something. A Sunday. I, 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 I ran it that year. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I said I'm never running for the July again. Yeah. 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 I miss out think it's very important <coughs> to have it on the 4th of July. Monday. Independence. Day. If we're not going to do that, let's have one week in June or uh, Christmas, New Year, <laughs> all in one week. You gotta have it. I mean, it's the Fourth of July. That's very important, I think, to yeah. the people that it serves. Mm -hmm. Jess, I appreciate your comments. I I think they're well taken, but I do wonder if this is worth changing. Barry, had a comment. yeah, Barry Russo. Um, <sighs> Going from 6,600 to 12,500 in two years to you seems like a big leap to take. And, and 
that's the reality of it. But the perception of it from my side is that when I saw July 4th fireworks, 12,500, I'm saying to myself, I'm surprised it's not 30,000. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, okay. But um, yeah, I can see your feeling. It is, you know, why do we have to jump so high? But on the other hand, I think it's worth every penny of it yeah. for the community. Agreed. I mean, I'll make a motion we approve community development. No, I approve uh, Northside Fireworks as our <coughs> first of the 4th of July 2023 fireworks display at a minimum cost of $12,500. Second. I have a motion by Don and a second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? Tina, this would be a next. The it's next in the budget. budget that we're budgeting for right now, yeah. actually. Actually, we would have to pay for it now, so it's going to shore our budget a little bit. We prepay it, and we usually get a good deal. Maybe we don't need to prepay it, though. I'll have to check and see. Usually, they give us a little bit of a discount if we do. Yeah, I remember that. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Jess? Okay. I'm going to oppose it. Okay. The motion is passed, four to one. Next, number seven, review and accept police car financing bid. Sarah, that's you. So I submitted four bids, only two came back. One um, didn't bid at all. One told me that they um, currently their rates were nothing competitive, so it wasn't worth their time or my time. Um, so the union bank's interest rate is 4.35%. Community National Bank is 5.14%. I recommend going with Union Bank to save interest okay. money. All right, so is there a motion regarding this? I move to accept the bid by from Union Bank for $43,060, an interest rate of 4.35%, semi annual fixed for three years. All right, I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Is this part of our budget, too, Tina? Yes, this is in the budget. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed unanimously. Number nine, town road right away request. Number eight. eight. Oh, number eight. Sorry, I skipped that one. I'm sorry. Yeah, number eight, approve and sign errors and omissions. <coughs> this is the Stancliffe property, which is in current use. And the current use, the state level, uh, saw that the the, uh, there were two properties, but they were adjoining. So they asked for it to go in as one parcel. So you will see the two ENOs that are on there, they cancel each other out. So there's a net gain of zero. It just puts the, all of the, the current use on the one parcel. It makes it one parcel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know Steve had separated 18 acres out at one point, but let's see what they're gonna do. All right, do I hear a motion regarding this? I move to accept the errors of the mission certificate as presented. Second. I have a motion by John and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Yes. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion is passed unanimously. Now we have number nine, town road right away request. This one I'll turn over to Kevin. It's a request from the Law Electric Co-op. Okay. Go ahead, Kevin. So this is a request from the electric department down in Wisconsin to work it out right away on Cody Hill. Yeah. Um, down on the back side, where the little horse farm that's on the left, as you went down around towards the bridge. <coughs> yeah. We have a, a, a box right there they're going to connect into, come across our road, and come up our right away up into that parcel, that field that just sold up above that on the right hand side as you're headed down there. Right. It's on the same site as like the old church in the mountain or whatever is there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion on this? I move to approve the right of way permit for Vermont Electric for Cody Hill Road. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this motion? I was curious about the impact to us. 
They'll be digging across the road. And then they'll, that, they'll, they'll fix it? Yes. The people at the end. <laughs> one of my colleagues is at the end there on the left. It's, it's a one-day job it's there, and they will keep the traffic open on half the road yeah. as you're doing it. We'll take a break. No, okay. we'll take one at all. And they're not going to do the work this fall. They're doing it next spring. Oh, good. Thank you. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Next, we get those two. Oh, we did the one. Uh, it's firefighter training in the town forest. So, Danny, I'm going to have you go into the detail on this, but it's a request to use town forest land for fire service training. I can set the woods on fire up there on your day. Dennis Marshall, fire chief. Basically, our instructor for the level one class that's being held in Morrisville, Scott had approached me, he's in the class, and needed a place to do forest fire training, which basically is hand tools. They're not cutting down trees, they're not burning nothing. It's called the one lick method. Actually, I went out and talked to Ron before he left. You don't have a problem with it. He said it's up to you. To get a dead right? Kind yeah, of you're going to do a four foot. Fire break. And it, yeah, one sweep and you keep moving. And they use the different tools. And when they're done, they're going to fill it back in. It's basically up to Beaver Meadows. And up there, the state and town is so close together that this would be, the state took a while to get the proof of insurance back to the town. Mm -hmm. So Scott had set up an, another place up on Garfield Road. So this would be an alternate. So that's basically what it is. It's not going to hurt any of the forest. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's like a good idea. Yeah. The training. Uh, where, where in Beaver Meadow is it? Like, well, it won't affect like any of the right walking or hiking trails up there. It's, yeah. They're going to be in the town forest, Jess. It's uh, they're going to use the uh, parking lot at the end of Beaver Meadows Road as a staging area, and they'll be in the town forest from there where they do their training. Right. That's and just can, a big zone. So by, by the gate. And there's scheduled on Saturday. This Saturday? Yes. Uh -huh. But again, this is an alternate site at this point. We just got the insurance certificate today. The LCT said, or passive, our insurance carrier said, you need to get an insurance certificate from them to be training on our land. So they got it to us this morning, but because there was such a lag time, they had already gone to check out another site. So they may not use this, but it's a backup in the event the other site falls through. Okay. So I hear motion regarding this. There are there are like a number of walking trails in the woods there that aren't associated with the long trail um, that are just, you know, like um, recreation, you know, little like footpaths, you know, people walk their dogs on. So I just want to, I'm sure the firefighters would be aware of that, but I know that like volunteers go in there and clear and I just, and there's also the vast trail that goes through it there. So I'm just I just want to make sure there's a lot of like different recreational zones that kind of intersect. So I just was wanting to make sure it sounds like a great thing. I just want to make sure that they would be aware of that. There's, you know, trails in the woods too. I think most of the firefighters are aware of those trails. This class is taught by the agency of natural resources. So it'll look like it did when we got there. When we leave. Okay. Did you hear that Jess? Yep. Okay. Thank you. It's a great idea given what we see out west of the forest fires that we have people here today <coughs> how to deal with them. Okay, do we, do we have a motion to vote on? I'll make a motion we approve it. Or do you have a motion? No. Okay, motion by Brian, do you have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Any further discussion on this motion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Unanimously. Thanks, Jess. Okay, old business, uh, parking report. <clears throat> Does everyone get their implementation plan? It looks like that. Yeah. Oh, it is, was it on the back of this one? It was, yes, originally. Okay. Just, yeah. just there's two actions that uh, I highlighted two action items tonight. Uh, the two ones dated, uh, the first two dated 1117. 
uh, they're both pretty self-explanatory and really uh, 10, should 17. Be 10 17. Sorry, that's 11, I apologize. Um, I'm wishing, wishing Halloween away already, apparently. Uh, first action item is the signage for Elon Street parking should immediately be updated on Lower Main, Portland, and Bridge Street is two hour maximum or less and enforced as such. So basically what this is saying is you don't want people parking all day in front of retail, business services. Uh, you don't want those cars out there all day. <coughs> Customer parking that turns over. They want to come to dinner, go to lunch, two hours is more than sufficient, right. even, for, even for a movie. People work in the village and wouldn't be able to park there. Correct, we do at times deal with complaints with the, the people that work at X business are parking in front of our place all day. We can't, no one can see our shop. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you please tell them to move? Can you work with the police department to try to get them to move? And our parking signage is not consistent as two hours through downtown. One side of the street on <coughs> Lower Main, I think it is, the other side is not. So this is trying to make our on-street parking consistent as customer parking that turns over. So right now we don't have like a parking person to enforce this unless someone calls up the police department and complains. Or, or email with myself or Eric, yes, it happens. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of, that'll be our enforcement. Correct. I, mean, I think in your budget, you'll see maybe that enforcement person when you get to budget processes with the uh, okay. police chief. Right. Jason, do you want to be a meter man? No. <laughs> no. I just want to, I don't want to vote on something and say we're going to do it. Right. We're, going to, so we're not going to do it. And you're, you're going to formally do this anyway when we do the, uh, the motor vehicle ordinance. Uh, the motor vehicle ordinance was had, as, has edits by the parking committee, but Judy's the other side of that. Judy's got some street edits to do in there, so Judy's not quite there yet. So uh, basically, I'm eyeing November 21st. Uh, coming into that meeting with a revised motor vehicle ordinance that has the parking committee changes and duties, street changes catching up in the last 20 years of select board meetings where those streets weren't added to that list. Mm -hmm. So she's got a lot of homework to do on that mm -hmm. one and then coming back at that time. Is that is that one of these in here? Yeah, that's for their motor vehicle ordinance. Okay. So don't have to worry about it. Nope, that. for tonight, just the two for the first two that are only 1117 dated. So the signage for all street parking should be updated. And Lower Main Portland Pleasant Bridge is two hour maximum. Uh, <coughs> the second one is well, do you want to vote on that one first, or? Well, let's maybe just talk about each of them. Yeah, sure. What do you think? Yeah. Can we, um, can you tell us again, um, Todd, what are we moving the date to for the, um, the, the <clears throat> editing for the motor vehicle ordinance? The ordinance, I'm guessing, it's up to Judy. My part has been done with the parking committee. So it's up to Judy's workload. Judy's got a lot of stuff thrown at her lately. So I'm guessing November 21st, but Judy, feel free to chime in. Does that give you enough time, you think? I honestly don't know if there's a, a hurry to get it done by November 21st. We're in the winter months as far as it's our parking. Sure. Room. We don't have any enforcement. I, I just picked there. a date. I just picked a date six yeah, weeks out. I don't, we've got budget we're going coming into, and it's going to consume us. I just, um, when Judy has some free time, have her keep plugging away at it. I think Jason needs to, to look at those uh, with the ordinance as well. Put uh, his eyes and some of the officers' eyes on it to make sure that we're not missing something. We're going to do a, a revamp on ordinance. I want it to be comprehensive, not just targeted for parking. So. Okay. Correct. Yeah, we're not ready for that now. Jason. Yeah, I just I think it's been mentioned, but right now I definitely do not have the resources during the daytime to deal with the two-hour parking okay. issues to try to enforce it. Yeah. So my phone starts ringing. That my shop is we're gonna, we got our hands tied up. This. So and, and most of what we do is voluntary anyway. I'm wondering what the significance of that is. So if we put up signs saying there's two hour parking, but we don't have enforcement for it. There are signs now for two hour parking we don't enforce. There are signs. Yeah, now. so for example, I think the police well. station side of the street's got two hour parking signs and the other side doesn't. If you go look at it, I believe One that's the, the case. Is, yeah. The intent here is that the parking, the on-street parking should be for, you shouldn't be parking all day because you work at Bourne just because pizza lanes across the street and, Parking your big truck across in front of the name, you see, can't see the storefront. Right. That's the intent. It's really simple. So you said the signage is already there. Signage is already there. It's just not uniform everywhere. We're just trying to reinforce that on-street parking is for business use, not for all-day people parking, not people working here, not people who live here. These are, these are. This is a public space parking. These are for the businesses. Would there be a time limit, for example, after business hours? But the two-hour parking would be... I believe they're signed from 8 to 6 right now. 8 to 6. Eight eight this two-hour parking, 8 to 6, I believe, on all the signs. Okay. You walk by like 10 times a day, so do I. Right. I'm not positive. Yeah, I'm not yeah. I, I, just I think it's 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., two-hour parking only. Yeah. And it's it's they're haphazard to the downtown. They're not all... They should all be there mm -hmm. at some point. 
So the signs are there now. I'm just kind of wondering, what is it that is not uniform? Uh, well, for example, one side of Main Street is, and the other side is, the other right. side doesn't have the signs. Okay. So there are some. We're trying to reinforce that these spaces that that too. should not be all-day parking for people who live here, people or who work, work here, here uh, off off-site parking, parking lots. If you're going to work here all day or live here somewhere, you should park somewhere not in the side of the road where these businesses need the customer turnover and these spaces. Yeah. And there's a couple of current offenders of daytime work employees that are parking there all day long. Yeah. And if you want to talk to uh, Keith Thompson how important this is, give Keith a call because Keith will call him Ben Whittier every, every, every time someone's parked and blocks his little, especially his old location where he's a smaller storefront. Mm -hmm. A couple of big trucks parked up front, no one sees me, thinks the customers mm -hmm. can't find them. And this is this is actually really important to our downtown businesses. Right. Agreed. So the second thing? We all can the first thing? The yeah. motion or understanding it, yes. Well, okay. Uniformity of the signage is, is not an issue except that we would need to combine it if we can. So we're not adding new posts. One more obstacle to push snow around in the wintertime. Sure. Um, so I mean we've we've been looking at that as far as that goes. I just would need specific direction of the motion as to which streets you want this on and if you want it if, if bridge street is indicated how far down bridge street you can start at the favor bridge i got to use that Tom. where are you in the favor well bridge <laughs> extra and come back to portland street or are you going to go the other side of favor bridge as well i'm not sure so you just need some specifics on the streets you want covered in the motion tonight yes if you if you want to consistency in the signage but it's, their advisory for now is going to be ordered straight now. Right. Their advisory. Yep. And it's voluntary compliance. And then once the ordinance is straightened out, we can do an education piece. If we actually have an enforcement arm that goes around to take care of us. So we recommend the Route 100 happen. sections of Lower Main, Portland. Uh, you can do Pleasant or not and Bridge. So at least Route 100 of Lower Main, Portland and Bridge. If you don't want to do Pleasant, you don't have to do Pleasant. But those spaces I think are important for MoCo and important for the other places, mm -hmm. businesses will be there in the future. There's only a handful of one pleasant anyway. So the Route 100 sections of Lower Main, Portland, and, and Bridge, and the on-street parking in Pleasant should be assigned as two hour maximum. You're <clears> saying Bridge Street from? Just Bridge the Route 100, which is basically goes from the Bijou to Brooklyn Street, and that's it. It goes to the Favreau Bridge and doesn't really go past it. Okay. As soon as you pass the Favreau Bridge, you got Bill Warren's apartment building right to go right up. And there's no on street parking in that little section after the bridge, I don't believe. No, yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. you're only basically you're doing Hanks at Chuck Spikes and you're doing uh down the street. There's one right spot there. in front of Tom or Mogab, I think. Yeah, there's one, one or two spots, and there's like three spots down closer to the Bijou. That's it, it's not many. So it's really just from the Bijou down to the Favreau Bridge, correct? That's it, the Route 100 section of Bridge Street. But the only place where spots are, but there's the nothing Favreau on the other side of the bridge, there's no parking space marked. Yeah. There is down by the Apartment. Correct, but that's not the Route 100 section. Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because Route 100 doesn't go down to the truck up on the street. Okay. Yes. Would that mean then, like businesses further on down, that way, um, if if someone worked at that business, they wouldn't be able to park right outside their place of business. They'd have to go park in the a commuter lot. Which which way, Jess? You didn't specify what street. Like I know, I mean, I know the guys who work at Chuck's Park right outside the yeah, the true. shop. Um, yeah. I don't know if other businesses because you know there are ways. I'm just curious if there's other businesses like maybe who that would affect negatively. Um, I mean, it sounds like we're probably not enforcing unless there's an issue. So. <clears throat> Yeah, it would definitely affect them, Isaac and Hank. If you don't want to put Bridge Street, don't put Bridge Street. I mean, in theory, it's not that far from them to go park at the Oxbow and walk back to the bike shop, but they don't think the customers get the parking. Right. Well, That's it takes up customer spots for Hank. Yeah, anyway, right. he's yeah. parking in. Park down the street, agreed. And he owns a building, so he can park out back. Right? Yep. <laughs> so, what's this going to mean for Kevin and the highway department? These extra signs? It means I've got to order extra signs. Um, and as Eric said, we're looking to put them on existing posts. I don't have to put in any more obstacles. Right. Shouldn't be many signs, maybe a handful, six or so, I'm guessing, uh, based on what we have out there. Maybe it's 10, I don't know. So there wouldn't be extra posts needed? There may be some, but the. I think you need posts on Pleasant Street, the only place I could see you need posts, maybe. Probably. 
because there's nothing in front of those spots on Pleasant and the Wamoka ways down to like uh, Bose, Pleasant Street Auto. You need to post on both sides, the front end and the back end. So there's parking in, in front of like we explorers that wouldn't be. Um, that's private space. That's those aren't ours. No. Okay. Okay. No, so we we could wait till it's squared away before we make a motion on it. That's what you're kind of suggesting, right? Well, I mean, you can do the signage in advance so that's up and, and the advisory signs are there. People get accustomed to it. Uh, better to take one for change slowly than call it once. Right. And, and the then if we get the ordinance revamped and, uh, and bring it out and put it through the process, we can be doing an education piece with the, with the public. And that's, again, if we have an enforcement arm that's going to be out working on it, we're not going to be advisory. So. Yeah. so we're not changing the ordinance, we're just putting signs up. We're just this. The motion you made tonight is just to put the signs up. Right. Right. Jason, what's your opinion on it? I just think right now we don't have the resources to yeah. to deal with it. You know, down the road with more manpower, we, we could. But right now we don't. Yeah. Well, I don't like the idea of putting a sign up that we're not going to enforce. You know, doesn't make a lot of sense. But there's some up there right now that we're not enforcing. I know. Over town, we don't enforce. So getting them up, that would let us have a. A look of where where we're talking about doing, and eventually once we get an officer, it will tend to dogs and parking together. It right. just makes the public think about it. You know, yeah. just yeah. Yeah. think about it. They yeah. just yeah. shouldn't say they're all there. These signs help you. Businesses want them. Sorry. Enforce. Even if you can't enforce it, at least it makes me think I shouldn't stay here for right. hours. What always annoys me when I go by Thompson's and it says compact car and there's a crew cab pickup park there that you can barely get around to go around the turnaround yeah. there. All the time. Yeah. Like, it's like, do you, do you think that's a compact car, really? I, I mean, it sounds like this. I mean, <clears throat> I know that this item um, goes along with the next item, which is to say that we take away the two hour parking restriction in the, the um, municipal lot. So I think it's to me, that's why they why this is important. Yes, they dovetailed with each other. There are whole rows of par parking in the municipal lot that are assigned for two-hour parking that people park in all day that we don't enforce, and that's okay. Those are really meant for more long-term parking. So these two votes tonight are more trying to better manage our parking resources. The on-street parking should be allowed for businesses, customers that turn over during the day, uh, people from outside of town or people from the farther reaches of town that come here to park or do business for the day, they get they get the off-site parking, and they're not restricted to two hours. I mean, that, if you look at the... The first row overnight parking, if you go out to here behind, like directly behind where Kaplan used to be, that's assigned two hour and overnight parking. Cars are there all day. And I believe that the signs are still there unless the sidewalk changed that. Everything along the white back of the church building is all assigned two hour parking. The same cars are there all day. Mm -hmm. that really should, those should be all day parking spots. So we're trying to dovetail, two hour parking should be the street parking and the day park, commuter parking should be in the parking lots. That's, this is trying to manage our parking resources better than we do now. And, not, and yes, most of it is voluntary, but 90% of people are going to voluntarily follow the rules. Mm -hmm. it seems like there's an education piece to this. Yes, <laughs> this is part of it. It's public discussion. For sure. Okay, so the second part, you want to talk about that? The second thing. So the second thing basically says to accommodate for more daily commuter parking. This is the dovetail of the other thing that's just said. Yeah. Uh, the highway department should be depicted to, uh, directed, sorry, to remove the existing two-hour parking signs in the top municipal lot. And the plans for this lot, when it's reconstructed in the summer of 23, shall allow smaller areas of 15-minute and two-hour parking in areas where overnight parking <coughs> has to turn over each day for business and plowing needs. So we're making sure we expand the, the two-hour parking on the streets in front of the businesses, and we're shrinking the two-hour parking in the lot where most people park all day. Okay, so do we want to... Take action on this tonight. So there's going to be a an area of people park for 15 minutes, an area of people park for two hours, and an area of people park overnight. Or all so day, yes. Saying? Yes, exactly. Okay. And the plan itself, the longer plan, talks about moving more of the uh, two hour, 15 minute parking uh, towards MoCo and the overnight spaces we want to make sure clear out in the morning are the short term parking spaces. So if we take it, if we do move on this, this isn't something that's going to happen right away. I, I imagine it's this going to wait till after we reconfigure the parking lot. Maybe Kevin can recycle some of the two-hour signs in that big parking lot and bring them up here in the streets. And then, other than that, no, this is a signage. This is pretty simple. The parking lot is not going to happen until 
spring or summer when it gets repaved. So we don't, <coughs> then we, we're not doing anything until then. You might move signs around though. There's two hour parking signs in that parking lot that shouldn't be there. Because right, they're all day. They're all day and they're used all day. They're by everyone's used all day. They're, mm -hmm. they're frankly a joke. Mm -hmm. And we really, we, we really shouldn't be regulating this. We don't want those spots getting to our parking. And this is what the parking committee came up with. So where would these 15 minute and two hour parking signs be? <coughs> where would they be if we? We'll detail them on the plans. For now, the, basically what you're doing is taking the two hour parking signs that are there, how they're there. Just, okay. No. Remo you'd be removing signs from the municipal parking lot. You'd be adding signs on those designated streets. Right, yeah. I understand that better. It says here, shall show smaller areas of 15 minute and two hour parking. Jared, <coughs> sign up in areas where overnight parking has to turn off. There's more, more future, I think. Yeah, yeah Eric has those plans parking. in his office. Yeah. And really, those plans will be there'll be some short term parking in front of MoCo where those spots will turn over. And there are certain uh, spots in the parking lot now that are designated for overnight parking that work with the plowing. Those will stay that way. Uh, but there are other parking spaces there where someone will park overnight. They need to clear out in the morning, and that's going to be a short-term turnover space to make sure that a person can't keep their car all day. So if that, if those spots, if X, Y, and Z spots are in the way of plowing, or in the way of uh, other needs, they're going to be short-term spots so people clear out during the day. But for now, we're really just reshuffling the two-hour signs around. We should off-street parking lot, and the two-hour signs should be on the streets and not on the off-street parking lot. I can make a motion. Okay. Um, make a motion of the signage for on all street parking should immediately be updated on well, well immediately. Within updated this fall, updated this fall. Okay. This winter. Signage for on, all on street parking should be be updated within a year. Yes. Um, your boss. On, in twenty twenty two. In twenty twenty two. Twenty twenty two. I don't know. What are your thoughts on that, Eric? Within 2022? Uh, as, as soon as reasonably possible. Oh, like okay. 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 The signage for on all street parking should be <clears throat> updated as reasonably possible on Lower Main Street, Portland Pleasant, Bridge Street up to Fayetteville Bridge as a two hour maximum and enforced when the ordinances, the ordinances are set. Approved. Yes. Approved. Okay. Is that your motion? I think that's it. Are you sticking to it? I'm sticking yeah. to it. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second by Brian. Any further discussion on this motion? Go ahead, Jess. I <clears throat> I keep coming back to the business owners, but um, is it possible for a business owner to get a waiver um, for the parking regulation in front of their shop? Like, um, if they had, like, for instance, I mean, like, if someone had a big event, they had to load a bunch of stuff in for you know, um, is it possible in the scheme of things for a business owner to get a waiver for the spot? I, I can add to this conversation about that very thing in that I've had a business owner come to me and say that those businesses that allow their employees to park in front of their own businesses mm -hmm. are forcing other cars to park in front of other businesses in order to come back into business in that right. shop. So they're actually impacting their neighbor business in a negative way by parking in front of their shop. So it's- You park in front of mine, I'll park in front of yours. Yeah. So. It seems just that would be something that would be happening on a not a consistent basis. And if we had someone enforcing it, I think they could use their judgment to decide whether that was an appropriate use of that spot. That's how I would look at it. It might be handled some in the ordinance too. It could be very generic too. Sure. It might be wise to reach out to somebody like Hank, the business owners, and advise them what we're planning to do and get his feedback too you know is that also as an education piece maybe he'll say okay i can park behind my building instead and isaac too or whatever um but it'd be it'd be good to rather not drop a bombshell on them you know with this and let them know that it's coming yeah so if we approve this tonight then there should be a caveat for that yeah it should be. It should be. So the amendment should be, I mean, the motion should be amended. Yeah, I would think so. That's my opinion. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> so how do you want to say it? 
just a minute to say that we're um, going to reach out to the business owners to. Uh, well, does this have to be like, like stated tonight that it doesn't go into effect? Is that something that's read again? It doesn't go into really effect until the ordinance is done, which right. doesn't sound it's going to happen until the winter or time. spring anyway. You have plenty okay. of time. I don't think there's a reason to wait. Okay, just so me. we can go ahead and just go ahead. Yeah, that's fine. <coughs> I just want to say we should reach out to these people too so they know and not get blindsided. I'll make sure I talk to Hank. Yeah, definitely okay. Hank. Yeah. And definitely Keith. Oh, I hear, from, I hear from Keith on this all the time. Yeah. This is this what you're voting on is very important to Keith. Right. Less so now with a new store, but Keith used to beat, a, beat us up twice yeah. a month on Marisa this. Marisa too. Marisa. Yep. But don't you have to notify everybody that's affected? We tried to. No. It's public. No, you tried, tried to the ones that you know. You don't, you don't have to send letters out to no. everyone. I don't want to no. put that perception out there. No, I was, so that's, that was my, that's my concern. We're just going to pick a few businesses that we think are going to be, have issues with it. I don't really know that that's. Yeah, no. I agree. I, I know. I, I'm. I think we can do an education piece. I think when the signing goes up, there will be questions asked. We can also do uh, an information piece right. to release to say signage is going up on these streets uh, to to uh, voluntary compliance. You know, my folks are using. I I can word it uh, in a press release yeah. as yeah. to what it is our intent is. Yeah. Um, I was thinking more like go talk to them. You know, go, Dr. Caleb. And I, 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 I'm just going to say about we don't have time. Right. <laughs> to hit all these streets and all these businesses have conversations about this. Right. Well, I want to say, I think like the lady over there is saying, because we don't want to pick one or two out to do this with. Like he said, do a press release, yeah. let everybody yeah. know, yeah. educate, maybe the ordinance, let them know we're maybe doing an ordinance. And we're discussing here, it's part of the reason we're discussing it, Brian. This is a very public process. Right. Everybody just ordered Kevin to go put the street signs in yeah. and be done with it. This didn't need to go in front of the select board. We're trying to do this very publicly, very openly. But as Eric said, I mean, we're all super busy and well, we're, we're yeah. only using like Hank as an example because his car is parked there every day right in front of his business. <coughs> um, Keith Thompson sign, and you know, those are the ones we that come to mind. So go ahead, Scott. I would just like to quickly say I'm an epileptic and I uh, walk wherever I go between a lot of limits and I see the signs. Maybe the signs need to be in different color, they do draft attention. I mean, that's why red stop signs are red and green is go. Maybe it can attract attention. The signs are there. I don't think people, if they do read them, they're not um, cognitively, core, mindfully, and intellectually following the instructions or have the IQ to understand it. Thank you. All right, so we have a motion. I think I did that motion. Okay, and we have a second. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed unanimously. <laughs> All right. Anything more with the parking report? No, that's it for now. It for now. I don't think all we'll, we'll, the parking stuff needs to get on the agenda probably until, as Eric said, later in the year. Maybe you can get through a budget when we revisit it. A lot of the stuff in here is spring, and if the motor vehicle ordinance isn't a big rush, we'll, we'll talk again in 2023. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Todd. You're welcome. Thank you, Todd. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, okay, next, approve the warrants. Do I have a motion to approve the warrants? I'll make a motion to approve the warrants. <coughs> That's a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second by Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Can I just ask a question? Go ahead. I just don't really understand what the warrants are that you're approving. I mean, I'm not The warrants are all the bills that come to us, and we have to make a motion to pay them. Okay. And, and all the wages okay. you know the payroll Thank all that stuff <laughs> yeah if somebody had a great question. question i had the same it question is. when i started here okay. you're not the first many people ask okay. Okay. don they're that's sitting right that's yeah. what i thought yeah, don you can show you hold up the packet that's a two weeks worth of uh invoices processed through our finance office and uh, payroll records and so on they are very very busy okay. it seems like just a formality but if somebody had a question about something you're paying, they could say, hey, wait a minute, what about that $5,000 TV you bought, you know, or whatever. We have not bought any $5,000 <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's, that's so it. Just saying. Oh, hold on. <laughs> that trip to Hawaii. That trip to Hawaii. So all in favor said aye. 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 Jess? Any opposed? The warrants are passed unanimously. TA report, Eric. 
Uh, reporting the town fair was last week, the uh, week before last, excuse me, uh, the week after our last meeting uh, down in uh, Killington. We had several of our town employees attend that. Uh, Kevin, the superintendent of highways, went down for a uh, road maintenance workshop down there. Uh, we had uh, Paul from HR down, uh, one of the classes that they had provided. Uh, Judy went down and, and attended some. We, we try to take people and target different classes because one person can't go to all of them. They, they don't run them uh, multiple classes. So um, the police department was down there. They had uh, three of their the chief and two of his officers attending some stuff down there, law enforcement uh, recruiting. And uh, where have all the employees gone was one that we sat in. So there was a lot of great information put out down there. Um, Kevin actually had a great conversation with uh, Mike Casella and Casella Based Management. And it was kind of interesting to hear their take from their side of the dumpster, so to speak, about the difficulties in recycling. Because he asked Kevin how many styrofoam cups he thinks it takes to make a ton, and he gets $50 a ton for styrofoam. So recycling is a not all profitable. If it has a one or a two within the triangle, they, they have sources to make money for that stuff, but the rest of it is, is very labor intensive and uh, equipment intensive. So it was interesting to hear their, their side. All we, you know, from our side, it's what are they going to do the dumpster? You know, <laughs> they have the same labor shortages that everybody else does too. So, um, reclaiming work uh, has been for the majority completed now in the phase two area. The uh, Chip Percy's operator did a fantastic job up there. It was amazing. Uh, I got it done in about four and a half days. Uh, the, Highway department went up today and you know, using the hydro seeder, they've hydro seeded those areas that have been reclaimed. Uh, hopefully hold them in place. Uh, we've got some warm weather coming. We're hoping the seed will take this fall. It's got a winter rye in it. So hopefully we'll uh, get some grass growing up in there to hold that, hold that back. I would publicly put out a request to the, our friends in the recreation community to please stay off from the reclaimed area. Um, there were two bike tracks that came down over the freshly reclaimed area prior to the rainstorm we had last Thursday, and that is where the erosion took place. I mean, it, it's, we could just keep folks off from that, that'd be great. They can now see the hydro seed layer that's on there, so hopefully that'll keep them away as well. Uh, highway crew is in the process of picking up leaves. Uh, we put a, a, a shout out on Front Porch Forum last week about that. They're gonna continue to do that uh, throughout the weeks and up until November 4th, which is a Friday, uh, if weather permits, we don't get a freak snowstorm. Um, but, uh, and again, I, I, I explained this year, we, we get calls in the past about folks, well, I don't live in the village, but I like my leaves picked up and it's not village residents per se that have their leaves picked up. It is folks whose leaves would otherwise plug our storm drains. That becomes a significant issue in the fall, winter, and in January, uh, we get some kind of a thaw and water can't get down the storm drains. It makes a real mess in our road. So, that's why we pick up leaves. It's not a, necessarily a, a thing of kindness. It's a thing of savior. We keep our highway guys from having to wade through the water to unplug the storm drains. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that because I've gotten several calls about it. Say, why are we using our fuel and yeah. power and everything doing it? Completely understand. I don't live in the village. I don't live near a storm drain. Yeah. And and I take care of my own pine needles in that case. But uh, <laughs> it, it's a necessity for us so we don't have those issues with the storm drain system. Um, and I would finish off by saying that November 7th coming up is a public hearing for the uh, public uh, input on the bylaw, proposed bylaw changes. That meeting is scheduled to be held at the VFW. The crowd at the uh, Coffee Country Club meeting was in excess of 100 people. This room is certainly not going to withstand that. So we have gotten permission from the VFW to hold a meeting there. What's and that's. Capacity? That. Oh, a couple hundred. When well, you're dancing, I don't think we're going to dance. But... <laughs> 185, maybe something like that. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Any questions for Eric? Yeah, I do have a question. Go ahead, Judy. Um, can you do, say your topics again? I didn't write it down. Just, you went to a conference, but there was something in between that and the FWB. Uh, the highway crew, the reclaiming, and then the picking up leaves. Uh, 
talked about like Casala, Casala Waste Management. Bicycles. Where have all the employees gone? <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you'll think about it. We'll, I'll we'll let you ask it. Tonight, tonight, 11. Okay. You made a call. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. You're welcome. All right. Select board concerns. Don. I'm all set. Judy. I'd like to um, send the condolences out to the Cass family. The loss of Raymond. Thank you. Um, and also, thank all of our volunteers, our fire, EMS, people who our <coughs> cemetery association, auxiliary. Conservation Commission, the BRB, the Planning Council, and other groups that provide their services to the town and do the hard work behind the scenes that we don't see, but they provide a lot of uh, <coughs> work for our community. Do a lot of work for our community. Thank you. If I can piggyback the comments about Ray LaCasse, uh, Ray was a member of Highway Department, for those that don't know, who passed away from cancer. Uh, a little over a week ago. It was very uh, sudden and abrupt. Um, Ray was one of our, uh, I don't know if we have favorites or not, but Ray was the, the, the big guy in the corner with a grin on his face and giggled. And uh, one of the nicest men I think I've ever met. And uh, he leaves behind a wife and three beautiful children. And at the services on Saturday, uh, Ray's single axle dump truck was front and center of the funeral home with his work shirt and his helmet hanging off from it. The family, uh, the kids all got pictures sitting in the driver's seat of his truck and uh, Ray's ashes were transported from the funeral home back to his home in Hyde Park in the dump truck. So family has sent out gracious thanks. They were very, very pleased with the, the support from the highway department. I, highway department has done a fantastic job as has Paula and the, the staff here in uh, taking, helping take care of the family through this uh, very trying time for them. It was very, from what was shared with us, a very quick, unexpected death. It was. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Eric. Jess. I don't have anything today. <clears throat> Select work concern? No. Okay. How are you? Right? I'm on set. Just uh, sorry I couldn't make raise. I had to work that day. Uh, condolences to him. And thank again all of our volunteers in the town that help us out through a lot of this stuff mm -hmm. thank you yeah, thank i want to echo that too i would love to go out of town on business and would love to have, have gone but uh, you know i've reached out to the family so thanks again and i agree with you judy all right next community concerns now do we have uh, sarah can you before we go into community concerns i wanted to uh, just talk to you about <coughs> the fact that I believe it was you that checked with uh, Vermont League of Cities and Towns or by statute and community concerns really are limited to items that are on the agenda. Isn't that correct? You said sorry, are you talking to me? You're looking yeah. at me. <laughs> yeah, the seat's oh, right behind you. Oh, oh, did you hear? I, I kind of <laughs> want to clarify what I heard. Is that because people come in and they'll like, talk about absolutely anything, and, and that initially the idea of the community concerns was mine many years ago because you know people couldn't say what their their feelings were about anything, and I said, well, why can't we do that? So let's have community concerns on here, and so we did it. But um, my worry is now that we're not doing it legally because you're not supposed to have uh, something that's not on the agenda be talked about, even in a community concern, and. I haven't I haven't done my research to make sure that's true, but isn't isn't that correct? Um, I don't have legal Opinion. information on it. Yeah. I I didn't look into. I didn't know I was going to be asked that today. Right. Um, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, but I know that. That's... I will tell you that I've been on in trainings, and I'm not sure if it's the LCT that don't recommend doing it. Right. But if you do it, have it at the very end once. The select board has gone through their their business and the agenda yeah. because anything um, that's discussed would be non-binding, sort of like at town meeting where you have all of your warrant agendas. Actually, those are the only things that you can act upon, and then at the end, to to keep it at the end, that's what's been suggested at trainings. But I don't I don't have yeah. a legal opinion on that. Yeah. Well, the Secretary of State has guidance on this, written yeah. guidance, meeting law guidance, and basically it says that uh, the concept is 
everyone should have a fair warning of what's going to be discussed. If I look at a select board agenda, they're discussing tractors, police cars, and fire trucks, and there's no planning nexus, I don't have to show up, right? Because that's, but and then when you go into a meeting and you have a kind of free-for-all discussion at the end and everything and everything comes up, you have right. to attend every meeting in order to not miss something. Exactly. And obviously there's the, the chance that the select board could be, could act on something that wasn't properly warned as in the agenda. So what the Secretary of State actually um, suggests is allowing the public comments should be directed towards the agenda items. So what they actually, what he suggests or she suggests, I'm not sure who wrote it at the time, is allowing public comments at the, at the end of each agenda item. So not the free-for-all catch-all at the end, at the end of each agenda item. Any concerns about the parking report, any concerns about the police truck purchase, any so you go right down the line right. and not have the catch-all at the end because the catch-all largely becomes too, becomes a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to avoid. Well, that's what I just didn't want to be in a situation where we're not doing the right thing. And yeah, it's kind of funny because we actually moving our community concerns to the end of the meeting. I know it kind of disgruntled some folks and I know Jess didn't like the idea either, but that's probably the right thing we did to do that before to make sure all the business is done then you can talk about things. But I would like to get a legal opinion about it because I, we've talked about that before, Brian. Yep. And um, I'd like to know, I want to make sure we're doing right. By no means do I want to not have people say what they think on something, but I want to do it the right way because um, the world we're in right now, there's a lot of liability out there and we want to make sure we're doing the right thing. I can look into that for you, Bob, easy enough. Um, I might suggest that community concerns is a time for the community to voice their concern to you it doesn't mean there needs to be a deliberation. It's for right. you folks to absorb that. And then um, after the meeting, you can ask me to look into it further or whatnot. But right. as far as getting into a back and forth on a topic, that's where we've run into some trouble before, especially with the, the planning and the development of the community and those conversations that come up. Um, They're not for this meeting. Planning, no, planning council is not here. We don't have representation here. It wasn't worn for that discussion. So it's fine for somebody to come up at this point. My un, my unlegal opinion to come up and voice that they have a concern about something that they've seen or experienced in town so that you're aware of it. But the dialogue back and forth is where things start to go awry. Right. And it's and also it's unfair too because it catches us off guard. If we don't know what we're even going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. right. We've got to research it. We can't typically we can sometimes, but typically we can't give an answer that we know is right, you know, two seconds later, unless it's something we've talked about in the past. But like what Sarah says, non-binding issues, that, that's fine. But I think uh, if we if we go forward with just t getting the input, so then it's, you know, we all have heard it, and maybe we can do some research on it, and maybe it'll become an agenda item for the next meeting or something, you know? So that's, that's my thought. Well, I think the best thing to do, though, is to let Eric look into this, because I think yeah. you're right. I don't think we should be doing it. The other thing is anything, I mean, you can... In Talk about anything that's on the agenda. That's why there is an agenda. So anything that's on there, you want to get up and mm -hmm. something you didn't understand. So that. The other thing is, if there's something not on the agenda you want to talk about, get on the agenda. Yep. And go and see Eric. Get on the agenda. I, I have a lot to say about, I have something to say about this. I feel like the whole point of community concerns is that they didn't get it on the agenda. Maybe we didn't want to put it on the agenda. Maybe it's not qualified to put up, get put on the agenda. I feel like if we tell people, if you want to speak, it has to be on the agenda, but then our agenda is so packed, you can't get on it. Like select board members often have a hard time getting items on the agenda. Like, I feel like that we say this and then community members are gonna be like, so where am I going to tell you anything about how I feel? I think this is I think the really sketchy ter territory to say people can't just have their two to three minutes to say their piece and that's it, you know, that's their right as voting members of this community. But I think researching it, you may find out we're not allowed to do it or shouldn't be doing it. So I'll take the blame. Like, we can do it tonight. <laughs> We've been doing it. I don't know if we, I'm not saying not do it tonight. Well, we certainly can take input from people, but yeah. we just may not be able to. Back. <coughs> Certainly, if it turns out it's something that we're not supposed to be doing, then that's right. You know, right. we can wait and find out. I, I tend to agree with Jess and Eric that, you know, and, and it's worth noting that even at tonight's meeting, we've welcomed public input on some of these items. So yeah. we, we're clearly doing that part of it. Yeah. You know, we, we've got these actionable <coughs> items on here. We're taking public input and, and then we're taking action on them. 
But community concerns, it seems to me, is a time when the community can tell us what's on their mind. And I think, as Eric said, as long as we don't get into that back and forth with right. the community, we, we can do a lot of listening. Mm -hmm. But I think it is important for the community to understand that it's not a time for us to be debating the issue with you. Right. We, can certainly, mm -hmm. right. we can certainly hear the issue, and uh, the administration can hear the issue, select board can hear the issue, right. town employees can hear the issue. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times in the past year, anyway, we've gotten into a lot of back and forth discussing something. I think, and that's, I think that's incorrect. That's know? what we need to avoid. That's what we need to find out what we can do. But we also need God, um, I think I should speak, but I think we need some kind of, I think the public, myself included, does not fully understand the process. How right. do I get on the agenda? Right. Just because I ask a question, am I on the agenda? I mean, no, mm -hmm. right? So I, the process isn't as clear to me as I would like it to be. I and I, I welcome it. I don't, you know, it really bothers me that people use front porch form as a soapbox to stand on and just be a keyboard warrior. I'd rather have them come right here and tell us face to face. Well, I'm you know. say we can't because it's not on the agenda. <laughs> well, you can come to any meeting. But that's what I get, we got to check on what okay. we can talk about. Okay. That's why I brought this up tonight. Go ahead, Bob. <clears throat> yeah, Bob Orfrey again. I think uh, it seems to me that I don't think there has to be a back and forth as, as Don and Jess had uh, indicated. I think it's just an opportunity for people to come forward and just have a two minute Bet. opportunity and say this is on my mind or that's on my mind. And I would expect that the select board and the town administrator here would just listen and mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a back and forth. You're absolutely right. I, I don't think there should, but I think it's, it's important for um, just for people's confidence in the process to be able to talk about what's on their mind. And, and I agree that I'd rather see people here doing it than on front porch forum face to face and put a name, put a, put, put a face behind mm -hmm. the name. Um, so that's my take on it. And I, I would hope that you would allow that to happen uh, at least this evening. Mm -hmm. um, and and find out the the formality of it, yeah. uh, and maybe make a change going forward. But that seems like a reasonable request to me. Yeah, the thing the thing that's tough from from this side of the table is that when someone brings something up, oftentimes it's in the form of a question, and you want to answer the question. You know, it may be something something that's happened already, and you can't answer it. But a lot of times, it's, you can't answer it, and and that's where it's an issue. Whereas if you say, okay, I've got this, I wanna say this for two minutes, and you may not answer me, that's fine. But a lot of us, and I, I, I know I'm no different, it's like, I wanna be able to give you an answer that, you know, maybe the answer is, okay, we hear you, we will, you know, talk about it and get back, right? So let's open up, you, you first, sir, you introduce yourself. Yeah. Martin Green from Best Street. And I just wanted to express my concern um, before this board. I did this at the DRB the other night. It's not an agenda item. But it's really a concern about safety in the uh, Jersey Heights development area um, for motorists, for pedestrians. You got the north end and the south end of Jersey Heights. There's a couple of blind curves there. And uh, just with all the new development going in there with the driveways and new streets, um, I'm just concerned about the safety for people. Uh, I don't know what needs to be done. It's not really a question. It's just a concern that, uh, you know, there's definitely going to be increased volume there. Maybe not to what it was before the truck route went in, but still you're going to have a lot of people going in and out of these streets and driveways, and if you, I'm sure you've all been in that area, you know it's kind of hard, especially if you want to turn into one of those streets. You want to make a left onto Best Street from the north end. It's, you know, it can be a little treacherous, and especially for pedestrians too. So just wanted to express that concern. Um, 
about something that can be done in terms of safety. I don't know what that is, but just wanted to to mention that, you know, to say that I think that's important with all the development that's going on that we consider that, how to handle that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I did want to respond to that because I've had several of those comments, um, both <laughs> phone calls and emails and having to do with, with that as far as that area. The one thing I can say is that it's still a state highway <clears throat> and we didn't, we had no part in either denying or allowing that um, that pavement cut, the access there, because that's all state. So, you know, there wasn't a lot we could do as far as that. And, that, and of course, the state did their traffic study and Act 250 and all that stuff, the whole process. So we had no, no way to hit the brakes and that at all. You know, they granted the, the access. But I, I understand the concern. I said it to another five people. Same thing. I mean, it, it seems like it's going to be a busier, more congested, dangerous area. You know, somebody's stopped to turn left right there to the new housing, and there's a smack truck there trying to stop. It's going to be dangerous. So anyway, I, I hear you. But, yeah, see, this this is what I hear. It's a perfect example. I want to answer. I want Break to respond. Break out the duct tape. You know? Right. Go ahead, Bob. Um, Bob Bortry. I live on Randolph Road. Just a couple of, uh, and I don't want an answer. Uh, the proposals that have been sent forward uh, regarding uh, development and uh, the zoning changes, I think are a step in the right direction. I think that uh, it's a modest step, but it, it does begin to show some constraint on the development that's taking place. And I would encourage the select board and the, the uh, the town administrator not to strip out parts of that uh, sort of cherry pick what what you like and what you don't like. I would like to see it passed in its whole, and I would like the uh, the village trustees to do the same. And I shall attend those meetings as well. Um, I think it, in a way, it seems to me that. It will bring the community together. Right now, the community is very much divided, and <clears throat> we have enough of that going on in our country. So we don't need that in our community. And I think this could be a positive step to get everybody to say, OK, it's not everything we wanted, but we got part of this, or they got part of that, and that's OK. So uh, I, I, I would. I would very much like for that to be passed in its entirety and not pieces stripped out because of one entity or another entity. So uh, it, that I think is very important. And there was an awful lot of work that went into that. And uh, I think it was the best possible proposal that everyone felt could get by both, both uh, jurisdictions. Um, so anyway, and the, f the final thing is, if we all just think about what we want our community to look like 10 years from now, it's, it's, we are moving at a very, very fast pace. And I'm, I'm not only concerned for our community, I'm concerned for Vermont. Um, the reason we all live here, let's protect that. Thank you, Bob. Who else wants to speak? Please. Go ahead, Tom. Yes, thank you. My name is Tom Cluvia. And first thing, I'd like to state that the um, meeting at the VFW is not going to be zoomed. That's correct. Yeah. That. We do lose that option when we move from this room. Uh, I mean, you, anyways, that's another day. But uh, uh, I'm here. My, my concern has been for some time is the rapid development of, of the town. Now, we have, and this is not any criticism or anything. We have like four sets of governments here. We got the the DRB, we got the Planning Council, trustees, and you folks. And they all work hard. They all have different jobs, different ways to look at things. And right now, I'm not sure it's all coordinated the way it should be. We have we have these multi-unit places popping up all over the place, uh, over 
uh, over on Pleasant Street, you folks have not even decided how they're going to park, and yet they're they're looking to build more. There's you go talk to one board, they refer it to the other board. Come talk to you, you can't do anything. It, it, you got to go back to DRB. You got to go back to planning board. Now is the time, and I'm not looking for any answers. But now is the time for leadership from somebody in this town to come forward to coordinate this stuff. There's great, great uh, development going on, and there's some really bad development going on. And it started with it, with it down on Bridge Street, building units on the sidewalk. And it's going to continue unless somebody gets a handle on it. And I don't know if you folks are able to do that or not, or some other board member or what, but it's on your backs right now. Ten years from now, when the people who live here look back on what is occurring here, they won't remember any names of anybody on the DRB board. They won't remember anybody's names on the planet board. But good or bad, and we hope it's good, they'll remember every one of your names. One of you people, or all of you, have got to pick it up. I hope you're that famous. <laughs> I'm already in the history book. You forgot one. You forgot one entity, the state. The state's the biggest entity in the whole thing. You and it's and you could joke about it right now. You could joke about it right now. It's not very funny. I don't see too many of us out there really laughing as the as the traffic here is increasing crazy. You guys can't even handle the pockets. What other things are going to come up? It's not funny. It's time for you to take Thanks it serious. My time's up, right? Thank you. Go ahead, Nancy. I'm not sure if this is the time either, but I just want to ask a question and would like an answer. I've lived places where there's been moratoriums on building so that people could get a handle, the town could get a handle on the progress, on all this new construction. I think that would be appropriate for us at this time. I don't know how you go about it. I would just like to understand how that happens. Do we need to get a petition from the community? What would have to happen for that? Does anybody know? I don't know, but I know a lot of these projects are two or three years in the making. Right. So they're already the so they're already, you know, not not to take away from something that's in the process or already permitted. But you know, stop now. You need a year to breathe, two years to breathe. I don't know. I've seen it in many other places, and I, I, there's a reason for it. It's because we get out of control. The parking is going to be a nightmare around here in the winter time. Anyway, I just would like to understand if anybody knows how you go about doing that. Anybody? I don't think yeah, I don't know it's a proper it. time to engage in the conversation. All right, I just not a yeah. agenda. I See, that's okay. the reason we need okay. to do So then who, who could I talk to about it? this is the kind of thing. Yeah. You add it to the next agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Add it to the next agenda. So how do you get it on the agenda? In, in short, agenda? though, the interest rates are approaching 8%. There's a moratorium coming. There's nothing in the pipeline in my office. Development is going to stop this thanks to the Fed. There's no cheap money. There's no cheap money anymore. Okay, but I don't count on them for everything. I need. We need to get a little bit of a handle on our own community. I think, and I think that's the only way to do I'm it. So, there's, not, there's nothing coming. Everyone submitted their stuff right before the zoning change to get it in. Because they knew that was happening. Correct. Yeah, and that's part right. of the process. I wish that. Ha I wish we hadn't voted on that. I wish we had waited on that. But that already happened. And we just so. get, we get more. Anyway. I guess I'll figure it out somehow. And the other thing I'd just like to add, my own for personal, is that if you listen to what's happening at the state level, this is my own personal opinion, the one thing Governor Scott's talked about and Brenda Sable and, and many other people in the, in the government in Vermont, we have a housing issue. I know that. Where we're, housing is a problem throughout the entire state. Yep. I and we have been in this position, the state has been here for maybe 10 years, and has done nothing about it, all of a sudden, it's hitting us in the face. And um, the municipalities and the towns are working to deal, but we have people who need housing. And um, I just, we are all lucky here because we, most of us here have a house or an apartment that we're living in. And there are many people out there who do not. And I don't want to take away from that. But, but if, if we do a moratorium, we take away from that too. So we have to be really careful about what we wish for and what we want. 
because it does impact people negatively. But you have to actually plan when we do this, not just react. Yeah. And more so, it doesn't have to solve all the no. housing. There are 500 people right now trying to, that we know of that are trying to find housing. Yeah. They're, living, they're living here in our community and they're trying to live here. So, yeah. And there's 25 people out in the woods and there's 100 people in the hotels. And I don't know if my facts and figures are up to date, but um, I think we have to look at this problem compassionately too. And I'm not saying not built right. at all. I understand that. And I think the village, any village is the place to do it. Definitely. I don't want to see Route 100 broken up into 25 welcome houses. Built. Yeah. I don't want to see that. But I do think there needs to be more thought yeah. and put into it before we can make decisions. I think one of the big things that's happened is that for many years, you know, 20 years or more, there hasn't been that much development here. Nothing happened. It's been really quiet for right. 20 years, 30 years. I've been here my whole life, right. you know, and the all the zoning and all the bylaws and everything were still exactly the same. In fact, um, not much changed for a whole lot, a whole lot of time until just very recently. And the developers came to town and they did everything by the book, yeah. everything the way they were supposed to do it with the state, Act 250, everything they did, and they got the permits to do it. And they, all these buildings started popping up and we're all going, whoa, whoa, there's a lot of building going on. And we hear from people, you know, from Lamont Housing Partnership, they, they've got 540 applications for that one Hutchin Street 24 unit building, 540. That was the latest one I just heard mm -hmm. two days ago. And that didn't count the 500 Judy's talking about. Um, it's crazy. And, and so we just have to listen to everything. I don't know that we can even do a moratorium like that, you know. I don't, also don't know what, what else is out there, yeah. you know, but. From the years of 2010 to 2020, our census numbers, our community grew by just less than 400, just over, just less, approximately 400 people. That is not a lot of growth. 400 people when you have 5,200 to 5,600 people is paltry. It is way ha less than half the national average. Yeah, but didn't we have that? We are not addresses, here. We are here. No addresses this year we, on the books? Household, yes. household size is shrinking. So it takes more housing units to house the population. If you go back to 1985, there were, there were five and a half people per household in the picket fence and the two and a half dogs. Now, the, by 2030, the average, the majority of households in the US is a single person household. Everyone lives by themselves now. That never happens. So we do. We're used to house seven people on a Victorian on Congress Street. That doesn't happen anymore. There's two people in there. You need to make up those housing units somewhere. Otherwise, your population shrinks. And when you have a shrinking population, so does invest in your community. Your own I, excuse me. Um, I <clears throat> can I just say something? Um, I have a couple of things to say. One is I thought we weren't going to, I thought we were going to, um, in state rules, where we weren't, we're, weren't going to get into a back and forth between audience members. Right. Just exactly what I said. We didn't want to. Do. Yes. I, right, and um, and the other, the other. I mean, there are a lot of questions. Um, and again, <clears throat> um, I think it it warrants maybe a special meeting, a moderated, a mediated meeting, around the development and the future of Morristown. Um, I think that could be something that the select board could coordinate or um, promote um, and and um, invite um, stakeholders from every different um, at, uh, realm of our community, because this is something that we've been talking about in our select board meetings every single meeting since almost like I've been on the board for a year and a half. Um, and the other piece of it is, yes, um, a, a town can put a moratorium on um, construction. I just did a quick um, internet search. The town of Fairley did it um, because they were concerned around with um, some septic system issues around um, Lake Mori. I don't know if our bylaws um, um, would allow it, but there is a pre one precedent that I found in a quick search in Vermont. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that that, that is the solution, but um, I do agree that um, Without a vision, um, we we could be, um, you know, in a worse position than we already are. I would like to make one last point, David. Go ahead, Tom. Judy, you said, and I, and I appreciate what you, Oliver, and everything you do on that. But the five hundred people that are homeless that you keep mentioning. I don't know if they're homeless. Are, I, well, they're you got needy people. Yes. All the development that's gone on 
has not decreased that one iota because it's not affordable housing. I don't want to discuss this. I don't want to discuss Well, this. it's the truth, though. So that's just what I want to say. Thank you. You're welcome. Todd, you should come to a planning meeting and discuss this. There are 138 people by my account. I couldn't see people outside the tent the last planning meeting. And this is that's the forum for this. This is not the forum for planning no, development no. discussions. It's that's not what this board concern. is. That's not what this board is. This board, there's a separation of government. There's a select board, this DRB is planning. That's why a select board member can't sit on the planning council or vice versa, shouldn't sit on the DRB. But right now, you're looking at community concerns. That is a community concern. Yeah. Whether you do anything about, you're saying you shouldn't in a way, you shouldn't even. I'm just, suggesting, I'm just suggesting you're talking to the wrong board. I talked to them too, but they sent me here. Bob, can we move on? Yeah, well, I just want to say yeah. we're, we're doing just yeah. what we said we were. I know, yeah. and that's, that's why I brought so it up. It's because I'm tired of this. I'm, I'm tired of this. I'm I'm so tired of it. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. 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 This is why I actually don't attend your meetings because I try to avoid this. There's this secondary current of planning meetings happening, and it's actually really inappropriate. It should go to the planning council meeting. It shouldn't be happening here. I'm intentionally not attending your meetings to avoid another night of doing planning when I have a board that actually already does that function. Okay. Do we have any other community concerns? Go ahead, Barry. <laughs> Barry Russo. A few things. Um, I would support a moratorium on building new buildings and anything above a duplex. If you look at Pope Meadow as an example, all the duplexes up there, it's a nice development. It adds to the community. These large high-rise multifamily buildings I don't think are going to add to the community. You talk about 500 people who are on a waiting list for the 25 apartments over there. I wonder how many other lists around the state they're also on. So it's not only a problem of Morrisville, I believe, my opinion. Um, I think it's a statewide problem. And being a statewide problem, this, well, she's left, a uh, young lady, and, and I've said it all along, it's not Morrisville's um, responsibility to solve the housing problem throughout the state. Although it appears that we're trying to do that with all of the new development that's going on on it. So the main thing I stood up here to say is perception is reality. That the way that I perceive things is my reality. And two examples, so one that came up tonight and one that has been um, out there for a little while. On 69 Union Street, there was a house that was demolished and there was a foundation poured. And the way I get the information, after the foundation was poured, a building permit was applied for and granted on it. So for that to happen, the person who had the foundation poured had to have either been living in a vacuum or decided that the consequences are minuscule compared to what I'm going to gain by building the house and going ahead with my construction. So he doesn't perceive that there are any viable consequences for breaking our laws, breaking our rules on it. Um, you're, going, you're talking about enacting a um, rule about parking, voluntary. Uh, you want to put up signs, two hour parking, but no ordinance behind it with any consequences. You're asking for people to, like I said, voluntarily honor that. Um, and I think we really need to, if we're going to grow the village by that much, we need to have consequences that are viable, um, not just because the people that are going to be moving in, I don't think are people from Marsville. I think the people from outer state, and they won't respect our ways of honoring each other. And that's all I'd like to say. Thank you for listening. We do know that uh, a lot of our surrounding towns, hearing us speaking to a lot of people in Underhill and Jericho and Essex and Richmond, they're all having the same problems with us. It's not more towns, all these towns, all through Chittenden County, everywhere. They're all having housing issues. Just so many people are finding Vermont a safe haven, you know? And that's uh, that's what I'm seeing more and more and more. You ever go to some of these other select board meetings? So that's what they're talking about too. The hot button issues are these, these House the housing units going up, and where are my fields going? Where's my you know my small town field? Yeah. But thanks for your input. Sure. Do we have any other any uh, community concerns? All right. We have other.
other business? I'd like to make a motion we go into. Can I make it just a quick? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Bill. Sorry. Were you sleeping back there? You yes. Right <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to speak at the very end. Um, just ballots have gone out. I'm just using this opportunity. If you have not got your ballot and you expected to get a ballot, please contact us so we can get you your ballot. And um, Halloween, you guys um, voted to close the roads. Um, the Halloween candy drive is going on. There's bins at Hannaford's, at the school, here at the office, Union <coughs> Bank. Um, please donate candy. And letters went out to all the village residents. Um, not residents, I take that back. Village homeowners, property owners. So if you're a property owner in the village, please let your tenants know. Please let your neighbors know if um, you need uh, help with candy on the streets that are shut down by the town, then there's candy. Let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Great job. I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session because we find that premature general public knowledge pending or probable civil, civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party to a clerk place the town at a substantial disadvantage by disclosing its negotiation strategy. Motion made to enter executive session to discuss pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party subject to Title I, Section 313 of the State Vermont Statute to include the town administrator Eric Dodge and the planning director's office, Todd Thompson.